For a while now, fans have been anxious for Universal to come back to Europe, and several rumors have been making their way around the web. I've been searching and researching for more than a month, everything I could regarding the grand return of Universal. This is what I found. Oh boy! Before we begin, let me just warn you, the information I will share in this video is not confirmed as they are rumors. I want to provide the best and most truthful information possible, but when you're dealing with rumors, some things might be wrong and others correct. So let's start in the beginning. Port Aventura opened in 1995, and it was owned by the Tussauds Group, La Caixa, Bush and Faxa. In 1988, Universal, which was owned by Vivendi, bought a majority of the shares owned by the Tussauds Group, making Universal the biggest shareholder, with 37% of the resort. During this time, the park was rebranded as Universal's Port Aventura in 1999. In 2002, two new hotels were built as well as a water park, Costa Carib, and the name of the resort was once again changed, this time to Universal Mediterranea, a name so many people fondly remember. During its time, Universal Mediterranea was doing very well, and it's remembered as the resort's golden age. Some famous intellectual property was added to the park, like Woody the Woodpecker, which to this day remains as the icon of Port Aventura. In 2004, a huge merger happened between Universal and NBC, which created NBC Universal. They had no interest in the European resort, so their share was sold off to La Caixa. Some Universal branding continued in the parks, but the name was changed back to Port Aventura. Since 2013, the resort is now owned by two firms, KKR and Invest Industrial, which also operates everything. Since 2013, the new leadership has made a lot of changes to the parks and resorts, but fans don't agree with a lot of them. One could say that Port Aventura is losing its identity. There is less and less thematic coherence in the decisions made by the managers. The shows, novelties and changes don't respect the original themes of the park. This makes it easy to understand why so many people were happy and excited to hear the rumors. But what are the rumors exactly? It all started last year, when it was reported that Universal came to meet with Port Aventura in Spain. No confirmation was given as to why they wanted to talk to the management, but if we think about it, there are three possible options. First is character rights negotiations. As I said, Port Aventura still uses many Universal characters, like Woody, Shrek and more. So an update to the deal made a couple of decades ago is possible. Secondly, could be IP negotiations for a new attraction or show, something like a Jurassic Park ride in Polynesia or a Back to the Future one in the Far West. Lastly, could be that Universal was interested in buying a part of the resort, just like they did in 1998. After that meeting, a lot of people started discussing and the rumors grew and grew. With every little change or new information, fans would head over to the forums and discuss among them. One of the changes were the merchandise tags, which now include a big Universal logo, or the cameraman working inside the resort wearing a Universal cap, or the way new season passes don't have the Port Aventura logo and just say Port Aventura Club when they used to have two logos, or even this Polynesia map, which includes Universal's Volcano Bay. While these could easily mean nothing at all, it's interesting to see so many small things happening at the same time. For a while, there have been talks about how Invest Industrial may have to sell their share of the park by the end of 2023. If this were the case, and Universal buys the shares, it would mean that they end up owning 51% of the resort, making them the majority shareholder. This all aligns very well, as it is also rumored that Port Aventura needs time to finish contracts with other brands before the arrival of Universal, which may also end in 2023. There's two other things I haven't seen being discussed so far though, starting with new trademark registrations and updates in Spain and other European countries. These range from movie franchises like Jurassic Park and Jaws, to other theme park exclusive ones, like Halloween Horror Nights, the very famous Halloween event, 
and Hollywoodland Universal Studios, which is registered for use in theme park services. Some of these could mean nothing at all, but the theme park exclusive ones certainly point us in the right direction. Before moving on, there's one more trademark I want to share, and that is Universal's Helios Grand Hotel. This is the name of Universal Orlando's new flagship hotel that's being built right in the middle of their new theme park, Epic Universe. It's a bit weird to see them register this one hotel name while the others are not. I'll leave it up to you to think what that could mean. The other thing I wanted to showcase is the website UniversalMediterranean.com. This used to be the official website and domain used by Porta Ventura until it was disabled in 2005 after the name change. This was until some years passed and the new dummy website was created. Now, what is a dummy website? It's basically a website that doesn't contain any actual usable content, just filler. You can go right now to the website and this is what you'll see. A background picture of Island of Adventure, Epic Universe concept art, a Christmas video and a photo from Port Aventura, and a blog post about shopping malls. That's it. After digging a little deeper, I found that the domain is registered in Temp, Arizona, but I couldn't go any deeper. It's an incredibly strange and bizarre thing to see. Why would Universal want to return to Port Aventura and Europe? We've seen this situation through the eyes of the fans, but is there a reason for Universal to come back to this market? Yes, there definitely is. Universal doesn't have the brand recognition that Disney has, especially in Europe. But with a full-on resort, this could change very quickly. Not only that, but Port Aventura makes money, and like most Spanish theme parks, the resort turns a profit at the end of the year. So with some changes and a stronger brand, attendance would easily rise, especially when it comes to international guests that stay in the hotels and spend more money, bringing in even more revenue. Porventura also has a lot of undeveloped space. This is a big factor to take because if they wanted to expand, they could. Another thing is the way Universal is expanding their theme parks. Last year, they opened a $3 billion Universal Beijing Resort making a total of five around the world. Just one behind a market leader, Disney, which has one in, you guessed it, Europe. And they're also building their biggest park in Orlando with Epic Universe. So they're going full in when it comes to parks around the world. Now, what changes would this bring to Port Aventura? This is where I lean more into speculation other than anything. But if Universal buys part of the Spanish resort, guests and fans could expect a lot of changes. Short term, we would see investment into smoother operations and renovations throughout the parks and hotels, as well as new infrastructure and backstage development in order to accommodate larger amount of guests and team members. Universal is one of the best when it comes to theme park operations, and Port Aventura is known for being not so good when it comes to this. Seasonal events would also receive a big boost, especially when it comes to Halloween, as there isn't anyone that throws Halloween parties as universal. The prices would also receive a little bump in order to secure the right amount of funding for future development. You gotta remember that Universal is a company, and they need to make money. Long term, you could expect more IP integration into the park, with new attractions, merchandise, shows and characters. While most hardcore fans don't love this, Universal would most certainly make changes including their most famous franchises, from Jurassic Park to possibly Harry Potter. They are going full in with intellectual property in their other theme parks, so it's not hard to see this happening here as well. The CityWalk type of commercial district is also a good addition. Something like this was planned some years ago and would connect the train station to the rest of the resort, but never made it through. This would make even more sense now, since a new train station is already in the works to provide more comfort. In the long, long term, if the integration proves to be successful, one could possibly see a new theme park emerge 
side by side with Port Aventura in the same vein as Islands of Adventure or Universal Studios. There is enough land reserved for expansion that they could almost fit the Port Aventura Park or Islands of Adventure with only some small differences in the layout. If this were to happen, I could also see a similar version of the Universal Beijing Resort, as that park joins those two different theme parks into one, combining Hollywood with IP-based lands like the Wizarding World or Kung Fu Panda. This all sounds amazing, but when will we hear anything official? I honestly have no idea. Some more far-fetched rumors suggest that a deal has already been reached by the two companies during the IAPA Expo last November, and Universal could announce it any time now. If this were to be the case, I could see them either announcing or mentioning it during Comcast's 2022 Q4's earning call, which will be held on January 26, so that could be a date to remember. But again, these are just some more far-fetched rumors, so let's just wait and see what happens. Make sure to follow us on Twitter so I can keep you updated on anything that does indeed happen. Now that you know all this, I ask you, would you like to see Universal return to the European market? And what changes do you want to happen to Port Aventura if this were the case? Make sure to let me know down below so we can have a chat. Now, as always, thank you for watching, and that's a wrap.